This next portion of the episode, we're going to be showing you a boiler room breakdown and want to give a big shout out to Selkirk TV for providing this content. Okay, so uh, first point we got here, uh, Ben and Colin playing Ryan I, and this is in the finals of the Orange County Cup in San Clemente. Okay, Benny drives his third, works his way in, looking to speed up at me, which is kind of a usual thing. He likes, likes to come at me pretty early, sucker. Um, so we're moving the ball around here. We see, we see Collins working inside foot. Collins does a very good job of kind of picking on that inside foot. Whether it's my inside foot or it's Rise, but he's just kind of getting us, getting us fighting over that ball. Uh, classic uh, forehand to forehand battle as uh, Colin and I tend to do. He's got, he's got the best of me the last, last couple times, sucker. And look at the point, stupid, stupid. Okay, okay, let's let's just let's just take this thing back here. <clears throat> let's take this thing back. So Colin and I are obviously grinding cross court. Okay, so I decide to reset to Ben. Ben fires. Now it's Rye versus Rye versus two. Um, quite the quite the hand speed battle. And as we see here, Benny does such a good job. And hang on, hang on quick here and so it's kind of the honestly it's a it's a lot of the same f formation i'm just going to pause it here real quick so uh you'll 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 notice anytime that rye anytime that rye goes at colin uh ben tends to slide over to assist colin and kind of the same same thing on my side anytime ben comes at me rye uh decides to slide over and look to assist me in the middle so he can be pinching so as we see here, I reset to Ben. Ben comes at me. And we got this crazy handsby battle going on. And uh, Benny does Benny, if you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, the transition from forehand to backhand and how he's able to keep it short and tight and really keep it in front of him. Watch this. Yep. And, you know, uh, can't give this guy enough credit, but... Something that he has uh, done in the last year and a half is is add that two-hander. You know, he adds that two-hander, keeps it very short and tight. Does a good job finding some spacing in those hand speed battles. Um, okay, so let's point. Let's move on to point number two here. So Divya Smith and Nunry and Bar. Okay, there there comes a speed up. This point is ridiculous. Nice. Jay gets one down. Uh-huh. I'm gonna have the pleasure of playing with uh, playing with Jay next year. Only if he's playing points like this, so. <laughs> okay, so we just kinda have a, a long grinding dinking point, waiting for the right ball. Yeah, yeah, not not too shabby, Patty. Okay, so I'm gonna slow this down here. Okay, and it's gonna stop that there. So, uh, as we see here, Deckel does this pretty well. In uh, last episode, I was talking about this um, more so in mix, but I like when the guy obviously, if the guy can do more damage with, with his fourth, and he's and he's more aggressive out of the air with his forehand versus the girl's backhand. I like when the when the guy is able to take 60% of the court and essentially, uh, you know, just, just with this type of shot, when somebody's dropping and coming in, I like when the guy slides over, takes that ball off the girl's inside foot. And as we see here, uh, you know, Deckel creates a lot of pressure. Deckel's a big guy, he's able to get in there, but, um, uh, Deckel can do more with that forehand than Nenry can do with this backhand. And and just as far as image and as far as presence, Deckel's just such a bigger presence. And there's and there's value behind being big in the middle and making yourself big and visually putting pressure on your opponent and getting them looking at things they don't have control of. Okay, so Deck takes that. As we see, uh, Deck just kind of slides that. And I'm, I'm going to go back there real quick because I was mentioning that, that Deck can obviously do more. But 
you know, in this sort of scenario, it's it's an aggressive drop. There's, you know, Deku can only do so much. So he just resets that. Okay, and we're gonna stop it right here. Okay, time. So, uh, what we're looking at here is, is we're looking at uh, we're looking at Patty speed up. So as we see, Pat was dinking out of the air. But a common thing that I see and a common thing that we, um, you know, kind of mention as we're teaching, uh, if you come to a TM signature PB camp, is that when you see added hand activity and somebody's at the kitchen line, and you see that added hand activity out of the air, something sneaky is probably gonna be coming or something hot is gonna be coming. So, you know, Pat went from like a parallel uh, you know, ready position or a parallel paddle position where it was parallel with the top of the tape. And then he got the tip down and I call that tip down technique. Uh, or we can say that his tip was getting towards six o'clock. Or what my dad used to tell me in wrestling is he, he used to say, Tyson, peck her down, brother. Peck her down. So, um, as we see, Patty has got some added hand activity. Looks like he's dropping the head of the paddle. Usually with that, it's gonna be a backhand roll. So let's see here. Backhand roll. Nunnery does a good job of defending. Okay. Looks like Pat was lost in the middle, but something he something he did here, because he, he was lost. So he's lost, he pops this ball up, lost in the middle. Okay, get back, perfect. So many times I see players hang out in transition. <clears throat> get your butt back, get back to square one, and see if you can live to fight another day, if you know what I mean. So, uh-huh. Have trust in Jay's defense, very good. Very good, very good. Uh, and and I, would, I would say that if your level of defense isn't all that great, if you're in transition and, and you pop one up, always give yourself more time. Someone that can defend a little better can probably get away with hanging out in transition, if that makes sense. Ooh, Deco UZ. So both, so on that, on these last two, so on these last two dinks here, so this is a ball that Deck is known to speed up on. He's got his feet around it, you know, ball's kind of sitting in front of him. He decides to dink. And then, and Pat resets the nunnery. Nunnery is known to speed up here too off the bounce, that that tip down speed up. Nunnery, nunnery decides to, uh, to not speed up and just uh, dink back. Pat speeds up. Now we got a hand speed battle and look at the look at the ball trajectory or, or look at the ball trajectory. Look at the tracking ability. Pat is not known to hit out balls, baby. Okay, you will never know until you let a couple go. And there's nothing more difficult in pickleball than to be sizing a, another dude up in a hand speed battle, sizing him up, fighting swords, right? And to uh, to be fighting away and to pull off and to actually trust your tracking ability. Very, very difficult when you have that high tempo uh, pattern going on and uh, and to be, you know, laying off it and trust that you can let that ball go long. Nice. Okay. I remember, I remember this final. Uh-huh. Get your ass over there, Tyson. Get moving. Make yourself useful. Oh yeah, there's my girl right there. She was so loud. This lady, don't know what her name was, don't know how much she had to drink, but she was getting after it. She was. And and this this men's final, I, I believe was at like 11.30 in the afternoon. So she was getting after it pretty early. Um, let me go back here. Okay, so, you know, something that happened to Ryan and I a lot towards, uh, I mean, I guess uh, all of this year, because all last year I would take most of the drops. So, um, last year I would take most of the drops. I'd let Ryan disconnect. We all know that, you know, he has one of the best poaches in the game or one of the best bakes in the game. He can make himself big. Uh, he can kind of get an eye formation. He doesn't mean to, but he can get an eye formation to a certain degree and just kind of play singles and, and be a bully with that disconnect. <clears throat> <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> so this year I did not see a lot of drops. Most of the drops went to Rye. This ball here, 
<clears throat> Jay came at me pretty hard. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> watch this. Watch this. Watch my body language. And I'm going to slow this down. Oh! Oh, my God. That ball's got some pace. So, Jay took a full cut at me. I was able to block that thing back. Now, I'm on my horse. Deal over there. And... To be honest, this was a huge momentum turner. 11-8, it was tight. 7-all, it's tight. We won this point, and it got us over the hump. Um, there's usually one or two you know, points late in games, if it's tight, where if you win those points, uh, it's a huge momentum turner. Call those momentum points. So hang on to that stuff. And if you win a point like that, nothing wrong with bringing the energy and letting your opponents know, hey, uh, I'm going to use that, and I can feel the momentum, and things are in my favor, and I'm going to let you know. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to look at them. You don't have to, you don't have to you know, look and bark. Uh, you, can, uh, you, know, you can do it the professional way. Barking is okay. Just don't do it at your opponents. Okay, don't. Don't, don't, don't. Do it to yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I uh, there was there was some there was some chaos going on, not chaos, but there was some some weird stuff going on at Nationals with uh, with. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna say it was a mixed doubles match. It was the bronze medal match. We all know who it is, and and somebody was bullying my 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 partner. My partner was dishing it back a little bit, but as as she should, and um, you know, just you know, for a for a for for a dude to be that old to be. Uh, you know, <clears throat> to to let a 14 year old get under his skin, uh, it just comes to show what that what that dude's character is about. If you know what I mean, not a fan. I don't think I'll ever be a fan, and that's just that's just my opinion. I, I just uh, I, th I think there's better ways to compose yourself, and uh, you should act like a true professional when you're on the court. I'm not a fan. All right, we got ourselves a Parento Jansen point. I was coaching during this match, and I know exactly what this point is. And talk about a momentum point down the line. Of course, I remember that. I mean, come on. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? That was the point that turned things around. Okay. Lob. A little backhand flick. Punch it down the line. Come on. Okay. Take the return up the line. Push her back. She rolls one. Dump it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. I mean, that's a that's a striper. That's a that's a big girl two-hander, if you ask me. That is a big girl two-hander at 9-8, at game five. I mean, come on. It doesn't get more clutch than that. On the dead run. Spank it. How you like them apples? Even though I don't like saying that because Leia's my girl. Leia's my girl. All right, this is Red Rock. This was in between the snow. This is crazy. You know, the crazy thing, too, is that look at all the people watching. It was like 35 degrees out. It's in St. George, Utah. And, and I mean, out of, out of all the venues that we traveled to, this was the most dedicated, uh, you know, fan or, or viewer. And it's funny. I mean, they were there consistently all day, every day through the snow. And it's cold. Um, okay, so let's, let's get, off of, get off of that talk. Let's talk about the actual point. Jesse drives the backhand line, and and why I like her driving it line, is because loose, Lucy does what? Lucy hits the return cross court. Uh, we we see them unwinding. There's some open space. It's pretty cold out. Ball the the dura ball is flying. As we all know, if it's 35 degrees, it's flying and it's cracking. So uh, drove. Jesse's in transition, playing some D. You know, just like last point, we said, hey, you know, if you don't if you don't trust your D, buy yourself some time. So Jesse doesn't go all the way back. Why? Because you know she's uh, she's got a lot of a lot of trust in her defense. So she slides middle. Catherine gets pulled out. Okay. And and I'm I'm just gonna say this. So lower level players. It's it's a little tricky to have this odd formation like this. Uh, you know, this is something that like Yates and Johns did a ton. This is something that Ryan and I did a ton. This is something that Colin and Ben do a ton. If you have somebody that is a that is a monster uh, that likes the poach, that likes to be aggressive, that likes their hands, you can you can essentially you know as Catherine's back scrambling, 
uh, since Catherine probably has a, not a better soft game, but Catherine can probably scramble better than Jesse. Hence, Catherine plays singles. Um, you know, uh, uh, Jesse, Jesse has faith in Catherine's defense. So Jesse is kind of creeping up, knowing that Catherine's drop is going to set the tone to her getting up and getting established. Or, you know, Ryan I's example would be, you know, I'm back. Rye is just kind of sitting middle and he's and he's waiting and he's waiting to to uh, pounce if if they were to float one up with their four six eight whatever right okay something else I like too is is you know so look she's she's back scrambling she's back scrambling okay high swing get in so if you if you don't send that message if you just stay blocking and stay soft in transition. Simone's never gonna feel pressure, and she's never gonna second guess, uh, you know, her her role when she's hitting a four, six, eight, tenth, whatever, because she knows that uh, Catherine or Jesse's not gonna swing in transition. So it's necessary uh, if the ball is high enough in yellow and green, and you're comfortable, uh, and your weight's going forward, it is necessary to send a message and to be swinging uh, every now and then. Just know that when you swing, you need to have your weight going forward. Times when you should not swing is when it's in red or when the when the person in front of you has been eating your lunch and beating you head to head, you should definitely not be swinging uh, or if your weight's going back. But this point went from went from defense to offense, back to neutral. This is why women's pickleball is so much better to watch than men's pickleball. I'm gonna say that again. This is why women's pickleball is so much better to watch than men's pickleball. <coughs> if you guys watch Cal, if you guys watch our, our our men's final at nationals, Ryan and I playing J Dub and Callan. I mean, for gosh sakes, we're having 30, 40 ball dinking rallies with a Franklin ball, <coughs> and nobody can speed up because the ball wasn't wasn't bouncing up very high, and it's tough to speed up. And so, um, his, I was at Peak this morning, and there was a guy named Kevin who used to take lessons from me. And he's like, dude, he's like, that was the most boring match to watch. He's like, there was no activity. He's like, I'd much rather watch women. And I said, hey, I said, women are you know, much more enjoyable than uh, men. And they bring a little feistiness. Why not? The guys are just, the guys are too nice to a certain degree. There's, there's some that are not. There's some that aren't. Um, okay, let, let's run this here. So that was that was a little risk uh, a little risky by Jesse to throw. So I mean, you see here, so Jesse just flat out. I mean, doesn't doesn't give it away, but takes it takes a backhand off the bounce, in which I don't. So look, so uh, but but it's it's coming off it's coming off Lucy's drop that's a little high and it's cold out. I'm sure that Dura is jumping up a little bit or bouncing high. Uh, women's point here we got Simone, Lucy, and Catherine and Callie. Got my got my girl Callie. He's rocking the feel of shoes, it seems like. And it seems like Catherine's taking that ball for inside foot. Oh, look at the defense. Come on. Like it. Okay, she's taking her time, taking her time, taking her time. Swings and then gets one down. Here she comes. Here comes the hands battle. Speed up. Oh my gosh, just stop. And these points are, are drawn out. Defense to offense, boom. Look at the hands by Callie. It's about as good as it gets right here. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. The point's still going. Speed up. <sighs> okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's run that through. Okay, so we see Simone uh, banging the third. She's dropping, she's coming in. Taking her time, resetting middle. You know, I I like this. You know, she's she's in transition. She's in transition and she's just resetting middle. You know, big target. Um, you know, it's the eye candy part of the court. Uh, there's not much risk. Visually, it doesn't put pressure on you because you have a big target to work with. And if you're not afraid of Catherine's forehand, that's totally fine. Okay, so again, she's she's still resetting middle, probably trying to get Catherine and Callie to fight over that middle ball or to fight over the uh, ball off of Callie's left foot. Uh, Simone speeds up and then cleans. Okay, high ball. Okay, and and I mean, as we as we see here, all women are using two hands when they're on defense, 
and you know just just the ability to really keep it short and tight to not overdo it to use that added hand as a as a stabilizer and just to have more control i mean this is the, this is a prime example of how how the two-hander can get that done speed up okay and let's let's take a look at that speed up again okay okay so a little little off the bounce short and tight okay and then let's let's, let's uh let's see what she does after Speeds up, zone two, or I guess right at the belly button. Callie pops it up, there comes the overhead. Callie buys herself time, blocks, get one, gets one down. And then right when they see Lucy has to take it off the bounce. That was a pretty good block and it was on Lucy's left foot. Right as they see Lucy has to take a step back and take it off the bounce. They're in, they're up and established. Okay, and so what, what, uh, got that ball to pop up was this inside strike dink. You see that? Again, watch this. So this is an aggressive push towards Callie's left foot. Pops it up. Speed up. Clean up. And Callie pops it up again, but still gets one down. And they're right back in it. A little bait in the middle. Bait in the middle. Lucy goes for it. And they, and they leave it. Um... Something that I want the viewers to think about is that when you speed up, you don't always have to clean up off your speed up. And probably, I would say this is, it's tougher from the attacking side. It's tougher to leave balls on the attacking side versus the uh, counterattacking side. It's easier to have somebody speed up at you and to just leave a counter. It's more difficult to have some, to, to, to have you speed up and then someone counter, and then you leave the re-counter after you just built up the courage and you have the energy and and you're, you know, and the blood is flowing after you sped up. Plain and simple, it's tough to bring a hard ball and then lay off than it is to see a hard ball come in and lay off on the first one. So know that you don't have to, you don't have to fight your life away if you're insecure about your hands, if you never leave any out balls. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of value and um, you can really, uh, you know, force your opponent to second guess their speed ups or to second guess their hands or to second guess their drive just with the ability of letting a few go. <clears throat> All right. Um, this is the winner's bracket final. Nationals. Okay. Let's check it. Mm-hmm. is coming yeah it doesn't matter out of the air off the bounce okay Callan's gonna get it done slide it slide it where am I going where am I going uh, huh. Slap, J Dub, J Dub. Okay, I'm gonna leave that point. All right, we got a got a mixed point here. This was the Orlando final at about 8:30 at night. It was kind of funny because uh, Benny and I played our uh, Benny and I played our singles final right right before this, and it was late at night. Okay, and just because I was blabbing the whole time, I'm gonna start over. Okay. So, uh, Rye, Rye likes to do this, whether he's playing with, you know, his sister, Catherine, um, seen him do it with Callie, but he likes to play the right and kind of use that, use that two hand in the middle. Jay's, you know, doing his usual trickery. Not too bad. Look at look at Jay's face. <laughs> I, I've never seen that. Hang on, hang on. This is good. This is good. Okay, Catherine gets one down. Okay, Jesse's grinding, using that uh, using that slice, that slice push. Jay slides. Catherine's on it. How does he poke that back? Okay, playing some D here. Another example of hey, if you pop a ball up, I mean, look at their court position. We we've, we've been talking about this. We've been talking about this, okay? Look, ball gets. Boom, 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 boom. 
Ball gets popped up. Okay, buy himself time, buy himself time, buy himself time. Throw one more lob up. Now the points literally back to somebody's hitting a third ball and the returning team is up and established. So uh, that was a pretty sick ATP. Uh, the principle or the the main focus of that last point was if you're playing defense, if you're scrambling, if you're in trouble, get back to the baseline, buy yourself some time. As we see, even the pro players do it. Okay, and uh, you know, I, I would say in a good majority of these points, there's been more defense than there has been offense. Okay. Okay, Rye pops this up, Jay slides over. Okay, and back. Watch this, watch this. Okay, hang on. So, so uh, Jesse just threw up a lob. Threw up a lob because she didn't have any time. She didn't have any time. Okay, now Jay's cut short on time. You can either lob or you can drive. But he, but he drives. He gets one down. That drive enhanced his next ball. Now they're back in it, right? And then Rye takes a little slice of the pie. Uh huh. Come on. Look at look at Jay's face. <laughs> Okay, so uh, got Waters Waters, Irvon Tereschenko. I believe this was in Mesa uh, back in February. This is one of the, one of the first PPA tournaments. Okay, grinding, grinding at its finest. Typical Waters uh, special, you know, drive a couple times, throw up a few lobs, but there's really no rush to get in. And, and they they will take more time than other teams with with getting in <laughs> and really let Anna Lee uh, just kind of just kind of run around and let her let her do her thing uh, you know some uh, type of stuff that that the Newmans do if you know what I mean um, Anna Lee acts as a acts as a big presence Jeez. Point here. Anna Lee acts as a big presence and is just able to kind of move and, and cause some ruckus from there yeah, one of the biggest overheads in pickleball right there. Uh, Jesse can uh, hit a plastic ball pretty stinking hard. Okay, let's see here. Uh, serve to Jesse. Jesse goes inside foot. Again, she goes back inside foot. Drive, drive. We see Anna Lee drop. She comes in. Speed up. Jesse was more than ready. Now they're now they're back defending again. Now they're back defending, pop one up, buy themselves some time. So, you know, what's what's kind of interesting is that through all the points that we've seen here, and and there's been we've we've seen nine points, but let's say let's say half of the points have been in this type of this type of situation where we see one team back scrambling, trying to defend other team at the at the kitchen line uh, with that controlled aggressive mentality. But something that we not we have not seen um from the returning team or from the team that's up and established is a short little trustworthy dump volley which could solve all this so as we see here uh, at the professional level top level and and i am i am guilty of it as well i sometimes don't trust it or i don't see it or i'm more so focused on hey from a percentage standpoint my court positioning is better uh, the likelihood of me winning this point should be pretty high, so I'm gonna stick with just plan A. And plan A is pushing them back, right? But rarely ever do we see somebody dump one. Um, and, you know, take a look at all the players with a good dump volley. Simone, Ben, uh, Stone's got a good little dump volley. Matt Wright's got a, a beauty little dump volley. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're pushing them back, or let's say if you hit a really big roll volley and you push them back, uh, I would hit the dump volley on the side of the person that isn't as mobile or isn't as quick. So in this, you know, this example, love love me some Lee Waters, played with Lee all year, but I would assume Anna Lee, uh, his first step may be a little quicker than mom. So Jesse should be dumping that thing over to who? Over to mom. Okay. And why they're dropping to Jesse I, I don't know because Jesse's a lot more aggressive out of the air and off the bounce. Maybe maybe not off the bounce, but uh, out of the air for sure. Okay, I, Irina does a good job of scrambling, getting one down. Took herself some time. Okay, now we have a uh, backhand to backhand battle. She pops one up, punches one, and here comes. Yep, overhead. Nope, this one. 
with some angle. That usually does it. That usually does it. So, um, you know, two options when you're when you're at the kitchen line and your opponents are back defending, and you feel like they're making the court look really small because they're defending so well. You've got to ask yourself: Have I not taken enough risk? with my roll to really get angle and get the ball off the court or have I not taken enough risk with my overhead where I've gotten the ball off the court um and then the, the other thing is uh you know have I not uh, uh tried to hit any little dump volleys and keep them honest so either angle it off hit a big girl overhead or use that little uh use that little dumper Okay, next portion of the episode, we're going to talk about two 